let's get ready to remake! Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Wizard World Columbus exclusive <laughs> yeah. episode of Remake Revolution brought to you by Mike McGTV, the Three Geeks podcast. PVD cast as well. <laughs> I am filling in for Mike McGee. I am John Orlando, joined by our contestants Dan. How are you? Pretty good. And of course Max. How are you? I'm very well, sir. Thank you. It's, it's Sunday afternoon. Are you guys a little tired? Yeah, a little it's a it's bit. been a it's been a long couple days at the con, but uh, we're coming to the end. I'm I'm feeling good. Just got to power through. That's right. That's what you got to do, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just now like feeling like myself. It's All right. In a couple of hours to get to that. Zone. I had had the third or fourth cup of coffee. Third or fourth cup of coffee. Fifth or maybe, sixth shot of espresso. Maybe a monster. <laughs> you know. Yep. So, We're anyways, back in it. A whole giant spoonful of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all hyped up on sugar and caffeine, so here we go. Let's do it. All right, so let's uh, talk about the uh, game here, Remake Revolution. You two have been given a, uh, a movie in which you uh, will kind of rework and explain to the audience what you would do differently for this movie. And you're going to give us a brief synopsis of the plot. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to talk about casting. We're going to talk about the writer and director. And we're going to talk about marketing for this new version of a film that has been assigned to YouTube. And so for those listening at home, that movie is The Dark Tower, which I believe came out in 2017, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, there is a... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was 2017, 2017 with the... Uh, movie? No, no, there wasn't. <laughs> well, it didn't star Matthew McConaughey. I was just gonna say, it, it, or it was just Elba. Good guy that apparently couldn't save the movie. No, no, it was it wasn't his fault. Like you know, he can only say no, no. he can only say what the words they put down on the page. You know, like it's not it's not his fault. <laughs> well, we can assign blame later. I still need to see that. So. No. So, uh, Dan, let's start no. with you. All right. Can you give a brief synopsis? Uh, what you would do differently with the plot and whatnot. I haven't seen the original, so I don't know, but I've read the books. So, I would, like, overall, and I usually don't like studios that do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. You might as well just do the entire, like, series of books more or less as well as you could. So I would have the first movie cover the first two books. So you would have The Gunslinger and the drawing of, of the three. In the Gunslinger story, I would have it look like it's basically a barren wasteland for most of it. So I would make it look like a little shiny and otherworldly, though. And then for like the drawing of the three parts when, when he wanders in to grab. If you want to write, I can hold it. <laughs> to grab the other guys, I would make it much more gritty. You probably start out with, uh, oh man, I forget the dude's name. Can I interject for a minute? Yo. How many books are there to it? Or there's seven. Seven. I thought there were seven. Okay. But there's Wizard of Glass is kind of a prequel. Yeah, yeah, it's a flashback. It's mostly so I, a flashback. I kind of like skip most of that and, and just tell it during the story. Okay. But yeah, it would, it, would, it would be like a giant movie trilogy. You're looking at like three hours for the first movie. Three yeah. hours? Yes. Okay. How about film number two? Uh, what changes would you make with that? <laughs> I, okay, I haven't gotten to the end of the series. So three is going to be a problem. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would follow it. You know, generally, just you know the way it is in the book. Okay. Like stylistically, I, I would want like them to be in in the wasteland. You know, going to the tower to to, to look a little more fantastical. You have some like weird creatures and stuff running around. You know, oh god, you got to put in the crabs. The crabs are awesome. Did it talk? <laughs> Yeah, and, and when they have, like, the flashbacks to uh, Susanna and, and, and every, everyone else. Who was the one dude who, who was the I'm not helping you. Mule? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you guys, the judge, I was going to say, yeah, don't help me. I, mean, I was just looking for a character name. Back. Damn. I mean, Scott's over there. You could ask him, maybe. You know, but don't ask your opponent, man. Fair enough. All right. Okay. But, yeah, but, like, like when... When it goes to, like, their scenes in, like, New York and stuff, it, w it would be, like, a gritty kind of... I make it look like, like the 70s, because I really like Joker when I saw that a couple days ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Max. 
What would you do in your synopsis of the plot? What would you change? What would you keep? I am going to. I'm going to do something pretty risque. I, I'm going to make a movie for every book written. I will make at least seven movies. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm going to play it straight up as it, was, as it was written. So, yeah, Wizard and Glass will be a flashback, but, uh, you know, I'm just telling the story how it is. Like, they, they do move the plot along a little bit. I think uh, universe building is something that uh, Marvel and, and Disney showed us that we can do. So I'm going to take a crack at it. I, I feel like uh, the first movie, The Gunslinger, is is mostly just a, a western. It's it's basically just the man of no name. <laughs> yeah. But there's some there's some good characters in there. Um, you, like there's maybe like five actual like speaking lines characters in the in the whole book. <laughs> so um, that one will be pretty easy. I mean, I think that one, I think the first movie will be pretty short. I'd like to keep that to like an hour and a half. Good. I was gonna ask how will each one of these movies? Because Dan's already said that there's probably gonna be three three hour epics. Mm -hmm. yeah, how, how would yours go? Yeah, like I, 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 the books build and, and the movies would build in that same way. The first one would be pretty short. Um, I don't. I want to introduce people into the universe with, without oversaturating. Um, so yeah, I would keep it real quick and short and uh, keep people wanting more because that's how the book got me. So that's how I want to bring people in with the movie. Um, it would be pretty much a straight up western. Um, there's a great scene where Roland, the main character cuts down a whole town of people men women and children included so it's uh i think that would be our good set piece um but yeah just a, a straight up like western and and that's the feel i would go for the first movie i'm like but with a little bit of the magical because there are some fantastical elements like you get to to see the like the barest little bit of what is to come so you, get, you do have to have that in there so i would you know it it, it would have to get a little bit you know, like maybe the little CG, a little uh, you know, like weirdness in there, because the way the <laughs> the the whole series goes, it it, it uh, you do have to have some some fantastical elements in there. So I would like to get like a you know, Guillermo del Toro or something doing like the 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 slow mutants, okay. and because uh, there's a scene where I uh, like. I, I wasn't going to gear him tour, but like, there's a scene where he would shine, you know? Like, <laughs> um, so I'd need something like that with a very practical, very physical, scary elements in it. So, like, that, it, it's, it's, it's sort of a couple different movies in one. You know, gave some different elements, and it'd be kind of hard to juggle, but uh, that's what I want for my first one. It's, it's basically just an actual movie depiction of the book as written. So let's go ahead and just go right into the segue. Writer director, you mentioned uh, Del Toro. Is that your choice? I, I, no, I would actually get Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is both writer huh. and director. Uh, I would get Clint Eastwood to direct. Uh, writers, I would, I would put to. I think you need a group of people. I don't know that there's any one writer. Um, Frank Darabont, I don't want in the room. <laughs> but I feel like it, since it's so huge, you would need. There's no. It might be too big for one person. It was. It was even too big for Stephen King. Um, he had to get help keeping all of this stuff in order um, as he was writing the story. So, so yeah. How about just a main writer? And then, uh, so Darabont would Darabont be my main writer. Main writer. Yes. Then you have a, a, and then, a, a crew of helping. Yeah, just, just to keep yeah. everything straight because it is so huge. But yeah. Clint Eastwood, I would want him in the in the director's chair. Okay. Director Clint Eastwood. Oh, Dan. Give me one second. So he probably wouldn't right. get out of the chair. He's so okay. <laughs> director. I'm gonna go with Edgar Wright. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that like he, he can do like multiple moves, and that's what this needs. Okay. About uh, writer, I want Stephen King to actually be in there. Ooh. But your ending is gonna suck, bro. Wait, wait. <laughs> See, because here, here's the ace in the hole. I want uh, Peter Straub to be there as well, because those are the Stephen King books that actually end well. And we'll <laughs> I do enjoy the talisman. I, I can't. Yeah, uh, well, a black house. Black house is really good too. It's not I, bad. So yeah, that that's what I want. And probably have like an actual like decent TV guy, like you. You you already mentioned Darabont, but you know somebody cool. Casting gentlemen, Max, you already went last, so we'll go with Dan first for casting. Okay, so Dan, who do you got for the man in black or flag? I want. Uh, I just looked his name up and I completely forgot. I am awful with names, people. <laughs> uh, Zorg. Who? Fifth Element. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, Oldman. okay. I love Gary Oldman. He is great. <laughs> for Jake, the kid, I want Finn Wolfhard. And for the gunslinger, I want Matt Mercer. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know, Matt Mercer is a voice actor 
Um, he uh, he does McCree uh, in have, Overwatch. Have you seen him do the yeah. makeup though? It's yeah, no, he. he I, I think he would do well. Yeah, yeah, he could, he could for sure. I mean, dude can act. I've watched like a hundred and thirty odd episodes of Critical Role. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Max. Your three uh, characters there, Flag, Jake, and the Gunslinger. All right, so for the man in black, I will have uh, Brad Pitt. I, um, <laughs> I I recently saw him in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, okay. and I feel like that was the energy that we need. Like, that performance okay. really uh, said it for me. Also, name recognition. Sure. And <laughs> sure. For Jake, the, the, the kid, I, I would just get some kid. Like I, I don't think it really matters. Like I, I would like to try somebody new. You know, like whoever, whoever the casting director, whoever the casting director was for um, Stranger Things, I'm getting that guy to go find me a kid. <laughs> because like any kid, any kid actor that I know of right now is is a little, I may be a little too old to play Jake. Uh, so I'd like to just find somebody who I can get that's age appropriate to to play the character. Well, the gunslinger. The gunslinger. I would uh, do. I would have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, he's got a pretty wide range, but the gunslinger doesn't actually require a whole lot of acting, yeah, like yeah, as far yeah. as like like speaking lines. So you need a lot of uh, emotion from you know like from his face. You need to like you need to get a lot without without him giving a lot. So I think uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is a uh, is a good choice for that. He's uh, he's a pretty powerful actor. So I was going okay. with the same thing, just with like grunts and sounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, marketing. Max, how do you market the film? This one, um, I'm I'm playing into I'm playing hard into the Stephen King aspect. I'm trying to get all the original like fans of the Dark Tower to come. So it would it would be pretty straightforward marketing. But uh, yeah, I would I would just make sure to heavily emphasize like Stephen King's Dark Tower, and uh, and and go that way. Maybe uh, hard R. Yes, R- uh, it would have to be. It would have to be. Like there's no okay. there's no way around that. There's okay. just like I said, he murders a whole town, sure, men, women, sure. men, women, and children yeah. included. Yeah. You can't do that without an R. Just for my <laughs> um, and also there are there are a bunch of horror aspects in it. So okay. like once I want I want to not be shackled by anything. So I think we we could get the hard R and and then use that one. Yeah, I would. Uh, any, any comic book crossovers? Because I know that you know Marvel had that whole tie-in <laughs> with it. Um, yeah. Did we so go that route or no? I feel like those are already done. Um, like so, there's already like the Dark Tower comic books are like I, I don't want to change the story. So since those are already done, like I can't do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, like I would just push all the old stuff. So we would, you know maybe a reprinting of the the comic books, you know, or or you know sets. You know, you can buy the omnibus. That's all of them, all in once, and you know maybe get a, a ticket to the movie <laughs> with that. So that's how I would play it. But just pretty much straightforward marketing. Dan, how about you and your marketing ploy? I'm going to go PG. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, that's... <laughs> hey, they're they're going to be bold. nerf guns. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no um, yeah, I, I, you, you got to go with a hard R on that one. Okay. I would want to have, since they had the crossover with, with, with Marvel, you know, you re-release that as an omnibus. You re-release all the books. Uh, I want action figures, basically, because I want a Gary Oldman action figure. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to push it like the next, like, you know, big, big-ass trilogy, like Lord of the Rings, you know. Now, just out of, uh, I have a question, clarification. Yes. For the action figures, as we all know, money is not in the figures itself, but the play sets and the vehicles. Would there be plenty of those? Sure. It's, I mean, you can have horses. You, you can have, like, parts of the tower that come out every time a new movie comes out. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> but then you'd have to do seven movies. <laughs> no, you do three. Just one, two, three. Yeah. Here you go. And you that would to the be top. cool. Um, th- there are a couple of different like uh, set pieces that I think would make an interesting yeah. you uh, can, you toy. Can a, you can have a toy of the town that he murders. Uh, that would can, be kind of boring. You can, but. You can do the 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 drug kingpin's office building mm-hmm. with, with like you know have like a revolving wall where where dude comes through. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, for sure. You know? Okay, any, anything else? The X Factor, if you will. Anything, any surprises, Max, for this reboot? Uh, the X Factor, I'm, I'm going to have a uh, Stephen King cameo. All right. Is, is one of one that I may have Stephen King um, play the farmer character that, uh, that, that Roland rolls up on. He's just a dude by himself out in like, the wilderness. He's got like a little house, and he's just 
digging dirt for a living. <laughs> yeah, 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 social media, I'd, I'd blast. I'd like to, I'd like to do a hard push on on social media. But yeah, I, I feel like this is more. Uh, this is the most just like a movie I want anything to be because I, I need the adaptation to be as much like the book as possible. Yeah. So I, I I don't know how to <laughs> like other than pushing the books out. I don't know how else to like market because it's more. This one's more for the fans, the original fans. I mean, I feel like it'll bring people in if you do it well enough. But I don't really care about the new the, the, the new people coming in. This is more for the original fans. So I would lean again, lean heavily into the Stephen King, lean heavily into the old books and the old comic books. Okay, Dan, X Factors for you. I, I want to have a crossover with some kind of uh, crab legs with Long John Silver's. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, I, I, wait, I, time out. Are there any Long John Silver still around? I don't know. Yes. No, are there? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, it's still. Yeah. Wait, I, I've got. There's that. one on uh, 161. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just really want to push it like it's the next like gigantic big thing. I mean, you would need a lot of money <laughs> to like. I want like a variation of like artsy posters. Okay. I want you know a, a couple trailers, not the the crappy ones where they just like splice parts of the movies in, but like you know it's it's got to be like like the the Shining trailer. You know, you just you just see like. Uh, <laughs> You know the the tower in, in in the distance and like a gunslinger walking towards it. So so very very slowly. Yeah yeah yeah. It's like it's very yeah. minimalist. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and and you know you got the voiceover like you know from in a from world the man that brought you the shine. <laughs> now comes his magnum opus. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, we're gonna need a couple moments here for my decision. <laughs> uh, unlike unlike. Mike, I am just going to take the casting as a whole. I'm not going to right. delineate out. Uh, I know at times he likes to do it this way. <laughs> I am not, because there's only three characters. Right, three, right. Three major characters. So. Eddie, that's the guy's name. He's in the drawing of the three. Yeah, yeah. I know, but since it's going to be the first movie for me anyway. Right, right. Eddie's major. Who would you cast as Eddie? That's that's, that's major, yeah. You know, if, if he was younger, I would go with... Uh, that's how he was horrible with names. Uh, <laughs> what was he? Fly, in? Jurassic Park guy. Goldblum. Yeah. A young Jeff Goldblum. He's skinny, you know. He's got, uh, no, he can. Yeah, yeah. He, he's I, little, and he's got to be. He's jittery. a little weird. He's already jittery. Yeah, I, I don't know. Goldblum, because I, I don't see Goldblum as like I need more heroin weird. I <laughs> feel, but Joaquin Phoenix. But no, no, no. It's a good pick. It's not a bad pick though. As okay. Eddie, I would like a young Ed Norton. I think he would have right. killed it yeah. back in the day. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, he's too old now. But. Uh, Anyway, sorry. <laughs> right, I think I've made my decision. All right, so let's, let's go one more time here real quick. Uh, so the synopsis of the film. Dan, you stated uh, you would do an entire series of the books. However, you would have three three-hour films. The first two books would be in film one. You would kind of alter the settings a little bit to make it darker, grittier, or whatnot. Max stated that every single book is okay, made into a movie. <laughs> and we're keeping things straight Maybe from the books right into the film. Western probably, is like probably the, the, the main genre with a little bit of otherworldly aspects to it. But you did say very time for each one of those particular films. Uh, I'm going to go with Max on this one. Because I like the idea that we're going to put out seven films... But they're all going to be different time lengths, which I, I, I can get behind. I think that that, that works, um, especially with the first book being incredibly short. You could either, sure, Dan, I give you credit for like merging it into a couple of the others. But I, I like that idea better. I like that idea. So Max wins that round for the synopsis. All right. That one. Writer and director. Uh, Dan, you said your director would be Edgar Wright, and the writers would be Peter Straub and Stephen King. Max stated that his director would be Clint Eastwood, with the main writer being Frank Darabont, with a, maybe a, a host of others helping out. The system. I mean, Darabont just has a has a knack for Stephen King, like moving it to film. You know, like he's he's done with three Stephen King books. But I mean, you, you could do Mick Garris too. Cause he That's true. Used to do the TV stuff, but it started sucking at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Max on this one. Uh, I think Clint Eastwood. Doing a Western with some of that otherworldly aspects thrown in, to me, is very intriguing. 
Um, so I, I like that, and I also do like the idea of a committee of writers with Frank Durbont heading up things. And I think, you know, there's a lot of that um, Western feel in The Walking Dead, you know, with Durbont as well. So, uh, all right, casting. Uh, Dan, you said The Man in Black would be Gary Oldman. Jake would be Finn Wolfhart, correct? Yes. And then The Gunslinger, you would play as a uh, voice actor extraordinaire, Matt Mercer. Max, you said The Man in Black, Brad Pitt. Jake, any rando kid? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. Pick up a kid off the street. Like, yeah, yeah, I, mean, like, hey, I, I hey, see hey, a kid in hey, some stormtrooper armor right now. Um, I'm sure he'd do a great job. And the gunslinger, Jake Gyllenhaal. Dan, I'm going with you on the casting. Aww. Simply just for that, I think Gary Oldman as the man in black would be fantastic. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I got to. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I can't hate on that. <laughs> I, I do like Jake Gyllenhaal as the gunslinger, though, Max. So, But I, I think overall, Dan, I'm going to go with your lineup. Mm-hmm. Because and Finn Wolfhard is a great actor too. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, I, I, I Wolfhard. Right now. I mean, he's he, he's in everything. Yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> doing good. Yeah, but, yeah, but he's not gonna be a kid for much longer. You know, like, he's about to hit that growth spurt and ruin everything for my movie. I almost so I'm not with the kid with, uh, <laughs> with the teeth from uh, Stranger Things. Oh, uh, game. What's it? Oh, well. I don't. I don't. Oh, well. know. This is not helping the remake revolution. All right, so. Uh, as of right now, Max has two of the uh, criterion for Dan's one. Here we go, marketing. Uh, Max said, we're just going to be heavy-handed with it, man. You love Stephen King, this is the movie for you. You don't like Stephen King, go screw off. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm kidding. Um, but you said you're heavily going to hit those fans uh, that love Stephen King. Hard R, reprinting, uh, maybe recollect the comics from Marvel. Dan said, a hard R, re-release the uh, comic books, uh, or excuse me, the comics and the books. You threw in action figures and play sets. Damn it, Dan, I got to go with that, because action, yeah. action figures on the Dark Tower. <laughs> I, I, I want to see Come on, that. man. So, I mean, especially when you get to, like, the... The crazy people. Now, I, I would get like a uh, Todd McFarlane in to, to sculpt your, your Dark Tower like set piece, and I just I imagine the rooms he would put in there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, if you gave him like, there's going to be seven uh-huh. playable areas, like, what do you think he would do? Like, I, 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 it's, like, I, it's like the He Man Castle Grey Skull, man. It's yeah, just a, right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Up and you, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like that. So now here we go. We're all tied up 2 2. We're going to talk about the X Factor. Oh, man. Dan, you said a crossover with Long John Silver. <laughs> We're just stopping there. I'm sorry. That's so ridiculous. If you read this no, okay. Oh there, uh, to, to Dan's credit, there are these monsters in there called lobstrosities. <laughs> so it does make a certain amount of sense. <laughs> okay. So Dan's going with crossover with Long John Silver. But maybe... Um, Red Lobster would be the better crossover. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they think they're a real restaurant. Yeah, like, you know. they're not yeah, doing that. I want to see the commercials for this. Hey, if you love fish, come on down to Lunch Summers and get your get very your, own. Get you your know. lobstrosity sandwich. Yeah. The Dark Tower like lobstrosity. Yeah. Yeah, like I can see the cop with like the, with the gunslinger on the front of the cop, you know, and it's like, with the. With the <laughs> With the crab legs sticking out? Yeah. <laughs> like, ah, that's the straw. You have the straw. Oh, man. <laughs> so the straw. Um, Dan also says it's the next big epic film. Max went with it's a Stephen King cameo and a hard push on social media. Uh, look, Max, I liked the Stephen King cameo. So Max gets the nod. X Factor. And ladies and gentlemen. Mm, takes another one. Your winner, that's what I'm talking about, people. Your winner of Remake Revolution. <laughs> Live here at Wizard World Columbus. <laughs> Woo! Max from the Three Geeks Podcast. That is what's up. This game is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought I thought that I was going to be uh, in a bad way because I've gone up against John yeah, so many times yeah. and I've beaten him so many times. Hey, I'm that right down the middle, man. There is <laughs> I, no I appreciate no bias. Yesterday, <laughs> I, I appreciate your fairness. Thank because you. I really thought I was the underdog coming in here, <laughs> uh, just given our history. <laughs> but uh, no, it feels good. It feels good to to stay, you know, put another one in the W column. And uh, well, wait, 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 but this is this is one on one competition, not team yeah, competition. Yeah. That's true. So what's your record for one on one competition right now? I've only lost once in one on one competition. 
uh, to Dan on some weirdness like a freaking Long John Silver's tie-in. Like, <laughs> Dude, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I just would have gone a little classier, just a little classier you than can't. that. You, you can't go to Red Lobster because they're not doing that You shit. can. Every, I think you can go to Red Lobster now. I, yeah, I feel Red like, Lobster, I think is I feel like the, the rose-colored glasses are, are taken every off. Every time I go there, they're like, oh, is there something special, like someone's birthday? I was like, no, I just want to have... <laughs> the that they've used this doesn't where I go for my birthday. Look, at this point now, I think Olive Garden, Red Lobster, yeah, yeah. they're all that middle tier restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they, they are. They're, 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 they're like they're like <laughs> Upper Applebee's. <laughs> yes, uh, Upper Applebee's. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if you're going to Outback Applebee's, or you could go to Red Lobster. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, they're step up, but they're not top tier anymore. No, Sorry, no. Lobster. Sorry. Yeah, hey, hey it is what it is. Be be what you are. You know, it's not. I think they were. Really? When I was a kid, yeah, it was to go to Red Lobster was a big deal. But, but when you were a kid, you didn't know any better. Like, That's now, true now, too. Yeah. They might have just had you fooled. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they're <laughs> they're <laughs> <a> <laughs> like making it a big yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> like why? Why would your parents take their kid to a classy restaurant? That's true too. That's true. Aha. Uh-huh. See, it's yep, it's all uh, it's all a I, trick. I'm sorry to break your <laughs> John's going to call up his mom like, you lied to me! I am right now. I'm right now. Mom. In, in a roundabout way. We need to have a talk. That's why I'm Long John Silver. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've got a pretty solid record in the remake revolution. I, uh, I fake make good movies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm getting that put on my business card now. <laughs> I fake, I remake I, fake movies. I fake. I fake remake movies. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. Because no one's no one's paying me for my actual ideas. <laughs> Only we can get paid for right? Dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> right now. Be awesome. But Anyways, awesome. <laughs> you know somebody who makes movies and that, that we can get in there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We'll work on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, a little, little side project. Okay. Fair enough. There you go. Awesome. All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Once again, this has been a Mike McGee production in conjunction with, of course, Three Geeks Podcast and, of course, the PVD cast. Um, with that, Max, Please. you want to tell everybody what they need to do? Please recycle your droids. <laughs> <laughs>